You're listening to Where You Live with Gene and Tony. This is Where You Live with Gene and Tony, and I'm Tony, broadcasting live from the Concierge Landscape Studios in Egan. Gene Sullivan's broadcasting live from the Extreme Exteriors mobile unit powered by Skype. Let's hear now from the Community Associations Institute. The CAI Minute is brought to you by Start to Finish Maintenance Contractors. Start to Finish provides 24-hour service for all of your home and business maintenance needs. Call Start to Finish, 952-259-1219 for your home, for your business, for your peace of mind. Are you a member of the Community Associations Institute? For nearly 40 years, CAI has provided education and resources to volunteer homeowners who govern community associations and the professionals who support them. Visit caionline.org to learn more. That address again is caionline.org. CAI helps community association board members by providing online resources, in-person training, and hard copy publications written by association management experts. CAI offers community managers professional development networking opportunities, and a certification program that's established as the industry standard nationwide. Minnesota has its own chapter of the Community Associations Institute to bring resources and tools from community associations around the country right to your home. Visit CAIMN.com to learn more and become a member of CAI today. Your community and management company will benefit from your involvement. Join the Community Associations Institute today at CAIMN.com and click on Membership. Well, Gene, in our last segment here, we're going to wrap up our discussion about uh, Indiana state legislation that allows homeowners within an association to go to the attorney general when they have a complaint that their association is not spending their assessments the way they're supposed to. Is that is that accurate? Yeah, I, I think so. And, you know, one of the things that uh, I don't think is really represented in the way this is uh, phrased mm-hmm. is uh, the idea that uh, let's ask ourselves the question, why? Why would an association not spend money that they said that uh, they need to take care of roads and siding okay. and lighting and, and things like uh, that uh, they're supposed to be responsible for? I, I think the the real reason, don't you think, is because, uh, again, a lot of this legislation, a lot of what we're seeing taking place is uh, in response to Nothing more than the economy that we're in yeah. right now, don't you think? I, I do agree, yep. I, I, I don't know of any association that is deliberately not taking care of their property when they have the money to do so. Usually it's because they don't have the money to do so. Yeah, I, I, people refer to these boards as if uh, uh, they aren't uh, vested uh, in the association like all the other homeowners. That's right. That's they right. are nothing... They're, they're not a for-profit corporation that doesn't live there just trying to make money. They're homeowners just like everybody else. And the one thing that every homeowner wants that I know of is they want more value for the buck. So if they can, if they can cut costs, if they can pay less, that's what they want to do. They don't want to pay more. Sure. And if so someone isn't paying their just, fair share, that's yeah. when they want uh, to get involved and uh, get that corrected. That's right. That's right. How many associations have we worked with, Gene? Maybe not so much now, but certainly during the boom in the early part of the century that uh, you work with a board at budget time to draft a new budget for the next year. And the first thing they say is, well, we do not want to raise the assessments. Oh, that's exactly. bottom line. We do not want to raise the assessments because that, that their members don't want stated. the assessment. So what happens Year after year after year, when they don't raise the assessments, yeah, they end up getting behind. Uh, you know the uh, the old eight ball there be, uh, because uh, uh, things continue to go up. The cost of insurance goes up. Uh, the cost of uh, the uh, grounds contractor, the cost of uh, the utilities, the gas, the water has gone uh, up water. incredibly. Yeah. And and most of these associations have irrigation systems. So now in this terrible real estate market and economy where people are going into foreclosure, those homeowners who were foreclosed upon are not paying their assessments. And it's another hit on the Homeowners Association, Mm -hmm. correct? Yeah. And so for this bill, I don't know. uh, I mean, I can certainly understand. I I think, uh, I I guess I will give the benefit of the doubt to State Representative David Cheatham when he says that he considers this to be a top consumer protection bill. I think that's his desire, mm-hmm. but I don't think uh, he understands or he's clearly demonstrating 
He does not understand the HOA industry That's right. whatsoever. That's right. That's right. I, I, I can tell you, people are going to be calling the attorney general's office complaining that our road needs to be paved and it wasn't paved. And upon just really, really surface investigation, they will find out, well, the association doesn't have enough money to repave your roads this year. Yes. And what so where's will it supposed will to come from? The exact same thing that um, Mr. Friedrichs talked about earlier yep. when someone was bringing things up to the ombudsman or uh, to that uh, Commission for Common Interest Communities, uh, a lot of things were what, he said? They were just set aside and they said, there's nothing here uh, right. because they understand uh, the other side of the story. That's right. And when, on, upon looking at the documents and looking at the budget, they said, you know what? Your association is operating the way it's supposed to operate. And, you know, the other thing that I see here that um, that concerns me is I see this as uh, another way uh, for uh, there to creep in more and more government. Yeah. And I guess I would say unnecessary government yeah. in this case, because what will happen is um, the attorney general's office. Do you think that they're set up to be able to be ready to take no. the calls from disgruntled homeowners? I, I don't think so. I think it's going to be a backlog, just like the ombudsman's office in, in Nevada. I just, I just think it's so ironic that these so-called homeowner advocacy groups want more and more state legislation to control their homeowners association because they think the board of directors has too much control and yeah. is evil. What, what the heck do they think the state's going to do? with more and more control. It, it, well, it's... and exactly what, what this does is it sets things up uh, so that uh, the attorney general will quickly say, uh, I'm not uh, able to take care of this. So what do we need? More government. And so what do we need? <laughs> another commission. We need another office. We need, we need another commission. Yeah. We need uh, mediation and arbitration. Uh, and it's going to be mandatory. And homeowners are going to have to pay for it. And, and any time, yeah, and any time the state says that they want to start something, they're not doing it for free. That's right. You know, they're going that's to come right. to the homeowners association that's called the state of Indiana or the state of Minnesota <laughs> saying to all homeowners that's right. that aren't even involved, guess what? We need more money that's right. for uh, the operation of government. And this is a, uh, and yeah. so there's going to be more yeah. taxes. I just, I just, you know, I, I just think it's so clear to me that a homeowners association should be operating within itself and operating its own community. And if you have a problem with your association, then get involved, get on the board. If you, your neighbors still say no to you and it's that important to you, then it's time to look at moving. It's not time to abolish homeowner associations. It's time to yeah. take care of yourself and take care of your personal issue. That, that is so true. Let me give an example, and this is from my life. I remember years ago purchasing a condominium. This is probably back in the 90s. And I remember at that time, and this is what, uh, you know, uh, uh, Mr. Friedrichs talked about, too. He talked about uh, a dog and weight restrictions. Yes. Well, that very thing happened to me. I yes. uh, purchased in a condominium. I was able to have a, a, a pet. Things changed with the weight restrictions, and I tried going to the board. I was unable to to do that because most of the home uh, homeowners, uh, that's what they wanted. And guess what? Um, I ended up moving because because your dog was a dog overweight. Is an important part of my life, right. and uh, and so I just said that association then is not for me. That's right. I didn't say uh, they are being uh, unruly. I just said that's, that's a right. group that's making rules and those are rules that I don't want. And so that's I moved right. elsewhere and that's, that's what's missing here option. in this whole conversation. And I don't care where you live. I, I lived in a, in a, a neighborhood of single family homes in South Minneapolis. There was no homeowners association, but I didn't get to have everything my way living there. There were parking rules about exactly. parking on my street. Uh, when the plows come through, you can't be parking on the street. My neighbors did things. Maybe I didn't like that well, but I have to live next door to them. So I put up with what I can put up with. Uh, now, the guy two doors down that was shooting squirrels with a BB gun, I did call the city about that. <laughs> I thought that was important. But but I followed the process and, oh, I, and, exactly. I, and the procedure. You, living, buying your own home doesn't guarantee that you can do whatever you want. 
including I, park your snowmobiles and your old washer and dryer on the front lawn. I just, I just don't understand. And the other part in this discussion that uh, people always uh, quickly uh, uh, come to in this argument, they say, well, uh, not many people get involved. And and again, as we've talked about before so many times, people not getting involved may actually be because they are satisfied with things yeah, that's right. and they don't necessarily feel the need to uh, become involved. But I would ask or, that same question of the state legislators, too. That's right. Do we have a majority of homeowners in any state that ever vote in a state election? No. Do we ever right. have a majority of uh, of uh, citizens in the United States vote in a federal election? No, we don't. That's right. But those elections are still valid, aren't they? That's right. That's right. It's a representative government, just like the Homeowners Association. Yeah. And what people need to realize is that uh, people usually don't get involved until something hits close to home. And then at that point, they do. That's, I, I agree. Yeah. Well, it looks like we are uh, running out of time, folks. Uh, we so much appreciate you uh, joining uh, us for the show today. We want you to uh, have a great Sunday. Please uh, join us Next Sunday, when we will deal with more issues, more news, and, of course, the things that are on your mind as well. You've been listening to Where You Live with Gene and Tony on AM 1280, The Patriot. Have a great Sunday. How sweet it is to be loved by.